In the last video I tested whether I could butt together MGN12 linear rails to create large expanses along the axes of a CNC machine, and I also tested some methods of improving the rails performance. I eventually decided to go with longer rails, and I also realised simply cleaning the rail blocks in alcohol significantly improved their movement. In this video I will reveal the latest plate designs and talk about where I'm at in this ongoing CNC building saga. When I began designing my CNC machine, I decided to learn how to use a CAD software to help me work out positionings for things which I would otherwise find difficult. You can see the design here. It may look incomplete, but I've done just enough to work out all the parts for a complete machine. I'm keeping some things from the previous version, such as the pivot mechanism on some of the plates, which will make tramming the spindle a piece of cake. And I've also removed some things such as the proximity sensor mounts, which I plan to replace with limit switches, which will be positioned on the moving plates instead of the receiving ones. So this should be 140 mil. So test. Eventually, I got some plates water jet cut in 4 mil 6082T aluminium, but to get there, I had to do a lot of tests. I made some plates out of 12 mil MDF, and I even printed some both of which were valid methods of prototyping. One I could do during the day while I was in the workshop, and the other I could do into the evening knowing the noise wouldn't inconvenience anyone. I'm going to jump straight to the aluminium plates. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of this being cut as I dropped the material off one morning before work and came back a week later to collect. It was done on a water jet cutter in a place local to me. Um, they sort of blasted through this like you wouldn't believe it. So there is a little bit of a taper on all the cuts and my bearing doesn't fit all the way in yet so I'm waiting for a reamer to come in the post to open that up. Um, I also made these mounting holes a bit smaller so I'm going to have to drill them out and tap them. I feel quite confident that this will work. This is Here is this part, sort of C minus the recesses so if I wanted to recess those I could get some special drill bits for doing that but I don't think I need to I think I've given myself enough space for everything the only problem is they made one mistake this part here I zoom in I don't know what went wrong there because everything else cut out okay so I'm not sure what he was doing with that plate really annoying I think I can get around this, so either I'm going to countersink the uh, hole or maybe I'll make a little bushing to go in there just to keep the uh, machine screw centred. Um, in any case, they're not going to get a uh, plug from me now because of that. The mistake was really annoying, but I'm going to ignore that for now and check the one thing I didn't test, which was the intermediate plate. It was a bit of a gamble to decide to cut all the plates out without having tested every single aspect, but I felt quite confident that the 3D model I designed gave me all the information I needed to continue. So to save the need for countersinking uh, or recessing the heads of the machine screws, with this latest design, I've made this spacer plate and the idea is that this fits between the plate that runs along the C-beam and the pivot plate and the machine screws from either side should fit in this, this space and it should allow for enough room for this to pivot. The shapes cut out are an accumulation of all those heads and any possible movement created by the pivot. The inclusion of this plate and the use of flange bearings means all the parts can be very easily and quickly cut, whether on a laser, water jet, or eventually a CNC. And what I need to do is drill out these holes here to 4.2mm and then tap them. I mark the holes I need to drill out with a permanent marker and use some cobalt stub drill bits to get them to the required size. If I want more accuracy, I could use a reamer, and I will later use one for the bearing openings, but for everything else, it's simple drill bits. I tap the holes to M5 by hand, although I later bought a 40 degree helix spiral tap, 
from a place which even lists the newton meters of force it can withstand. This bit can be used in a drill and makes tapping a lot quicker and easier. Ah, stuck it the wrong way around. I assembled this and luckily I didn't seem to overlook anything. It moves correctly and feels quite solid. I decided to mark up all the other M5 holes and continue drilling and tapping. I now need to address the issue of parallelism of the rails. Okay, at the moment, this slides really well because I've only screwed the bottom rail down to the plate. The problem I have is when I when I screw the top down, it becomes difficult to slide along. It's not impossible and I still think the lead screw could move that, but it's not ideal. Really when you look at professional machines, they often have one rail on either side of the machine and then along the gantry, one is at the front and the other is at the top. And the reason that is, is even if there is a little bit of deviation with the two rails not being parallel, because the movement is in line with the face of the plate, the plate will just move forward and back if there's a problem. When all the machine screws are tightened, the play is along the thin edge from top to bottom of the plate, and essentially the plate is being pulled or pushed together. I try to compensate for this by, first of all, using this jig um, to line the two rails up, or in particular line the guide blocks up, and I got it to about 0 0.02 of a mil, which I think is pretty good. But potentially the plate isn't entirely flat, there's inconsistencies with the parts, and like I said, when the top rail is tightened, it's a little bit harder to move along. One way I could get around this is obviously to just redesign the faceplate, but I kind of wanted the gantry uh, to have space along the top so I could have the drag chain suspended on there so I didn't have to add additional brackets to hold this in any other place. We'll see how well that works but at least for the Y axis I can still use this method if I change how I secure the top rail. What I've found is that instead of using 8mm machine screws to screw the plate to the rail blocks, if I use 10mm machine screws and a washer, which when screwed bottom out, it also leaves an ever so slight gap, which allows the machine screw to travel within the slot, while the plate moves along the axes. You can see the washer under the machine screw head still able to move. This solution doesn't seem to interfere with the overall movement, and should help prevent the plates from nodding once the weight of the spindle is in place. But in reality, this design goes against some major conventions in building CNC machines. Because the rails are on the same face of the aluminium profile, I cannot make any adjustments to compensate for any contours in either how the rails were ground or any created by the surface the rails are clamped to. If this is a really big problem, I could move one rail to either the top or the bottom of the gantry's aluminium profile and make a connector piece with some angle section which the gantry plate could screw onto and in turn fixes to the reposition rail blocks. Okay, coming back to the mistake on one of the plates, um, one way I can get around it is by maybe countersinking the hole a little bit and then using the taper on the head to self-align the bolt. So I think I'm just going to carry on, I don't have the time to go and get another plate recut. I set my depth stop and countersink the openings. 
To get the faces lining up just right, I use a bit of paper under the aluminium plate, which lifts the plate up and allows the countersink to sink a little bit further in. I also drill out the remaining openings to their correct size before tapping. These include all the M5 threads and some M2.5 threads for the limit switches. And finally I use a 16mm spiral reamer to open up the bearing hole to the correct size, which happens to be 16mm. The flange bearing pops in and is held quite nicely. I'm going to leave this video here, the plates are more or less ready for the assembly. I just need to decide whether to lock tight the machine screws along the opposite rails or move the rails to another face of the aluminium profile and use a connecting bracket. Thanks again for watching and to all my patrons for their support. I am completely sick of CNC machines, but I will persist, we'll get there in the end.